Hello folks, I am Marvel Master and welcome to this tutorial about creating a water split post process effect with a waterline. But before we start I like to thank all my patrons. They are making it possible for me to uh, upload my projects for free and they are keeping this channel alive. So thank you very much for your support. So as you may have noticed already, this uh, tutorial series will be split in three parts. The first video will be about creating a simple water split effect with a line. The second video will be about creating an advanced uh, water split effect with a displaced line. And the third video will be about creating a complex water split effect with a line that follows all possible displacement of the water. As bonus I will provide a download link for a project where I set up all possible water lines I made and uh, additionally there will be some sort of water volume in this too. And uh, I will upload a second project where I try to implement uh, the water line mechanic to my uh, dynamic water system. The download link will be below the video and it will lead to a Google Drive folder where I put in the both project files and an executable demo of uh, my waterline project. So let's jump right in creating a basic waterline. As you can see, I have already opened up my Unreal Engine 4 editor. I am on version 4.23 and I have already set up a very basic water material uh, that I can use uh, for my water line. So now the first thing I'm going to do is uh, right click and create a new folder. I'm calling it waterline. In here, I'm going to right click again and create a blueprint as an actor. And I'm going to call it waterline print. So now let's open it up. I double click on it and at first I'm gonna add a component a static mesh and for that static mesh, mesh uh, I choose um, plane shape plane. And for the material of the plane I choose my newly created water material. And for the collision of that plane, I want it to have no collision so we can walk through. So let's hit compile and minimize it and let's drag it into my world. A little bit higher and set up the scale to very big, like 40. Now when I play, you can see I have a very, very basic water material. And now to get the underwater cutoff effect, and let's do the following. Again, right click into the folder, choose materials and textures and click material function. I'm going to call it get clip plane material function and open it up. The error message can be ignored. So what do we need here? I right click and type camera position. Again, right click camera vector. And again, right click camera direction vector. And what else do we need? We need a constant. I hold the button one and left click. This will create a constant. So now connect these in the right manner. Let's back out the line from the camera vector and type dot and connect the dot to the camera direction vector. Then from the constant drag out the line and type divide and this divide is going to be connected to the dot 2 and then from the camera vector drag out the line and type multiply this multiply is connected to the divide 2 and then multiply drag out the line and type add and this will be added to the camera position and all this goes into the output so now you may ask what this constant value may be. I can tell you it's a value of 10 for my case because it's a near clip plane. 
You can find what the value of the new clip plane is in your project by clicking on the project settings and type clip plane and you'll find a new clip plane here. It's 10. For you it might be another value but for most times it's 10. Okay, now the get clip plane material function is done. Let's close it. Let's rename mine. Can't get around with it. Okay. Now the underwater split effect will be a post process material. So let's right click into our content browser, choose materials and textures, and create a material. And I call this underwater split post process material. Let's open it up. And at first I'm going to click on the material and on the left material domain I choose post process. Now I right click again and type call, call material function and on the left I can choose my material function and this is my newly created get clip pane material function. And from here I drag out the line and type mask. And on the left I choose for mask B and deselect R and G. And then from mask I drag out the line and type uh, if. So for the A value I got my I get clip plane mask and for the B value I drag out the line and type constant. And here we have to input a value and this is basically the uh, height of our um, water. In my case, when I click on my water blueprint, it has a height of 190. So I type for the constant 190. And then for A greater than B, I drag out a line and type scene texture. Oops. Scene texture. And on the left for scene texture ID, I choose post process input 0. And now for the A equals B and A less than B input, I again drag out a line from the post process input 0 and type multiply. And this I will multiply with a color, let's say a vector 4, and this color will be some sort of dark blue. Okay, now I can connect this multiply to a equals B and A less than B. And now this is ready to be connected to the emissive color and apply. Now this post process material can be closed. And again in our water blueprint, we add another component. And this time it's a box, a box collision. And Let's scale it a little up. My box extent, I think it was 50. And now it fits our water mesh perfectly. And now we add another component, and this will be our final pulse process. And when I click on the pulse process, I can search on the top here, and I now I search for material. And down here you find the post process materials. You can click on that little arrow here and then on that plus and then choose a set reference. And here where it writes none at the moment I choose my underwater split post process material. But before we finish this and hit compile we again go to the top here in the post process and type bounce. And we uncheck unbound and check use attached parent bound. This way the post process will only happen inside of the box, so when we are overlapping the water. So now you can compile and minimize. And now what should happen whenever I go lower than the water level of 190, uh, Underwater uh, should be blue. And as you can see, it works. 
So what we got to do now is to mask this waterline because it's uh, rather sharp here and I like to have a colored line in the middle. So to do this we add additional post-process materials. Let's begin by creating a line for this. So right click again in the folder and choose materials and textures and choose um, material and I call this waterline of process material and open this up. So the next part is a little bit more difficult so just follow along. Click on the waterline post process material on the left material domain, choose post process, then right click and call material function on the left choose get clip frame material function then connect this to a component mask and check B and uncheck RNG then we need a constant so hold one and left click this will be our water level again so for this I choose 190 connect this to an add and connect this add to another add and the first add connect again to uh, subtract. What we need then is uh, our line thickness. This will be a constant 2. So hold 1 and left click and I will choose a thickness of 0 0.2. This will be connected to the add and to the subtract. Now the upper add connect it to a subtract node and connect the other input of the subtract node to the mask and from here from the subtract we clamp it clamp it from the clamp we floor it and at the end we multiply it we're doing the same now for the lower part here we Connect the get clip plane material function to a component mask. Select B again and uncheck RNG. Then from the subtract here, we connect this to another subtract and connect the B input again to the mask. From here, we clamp it again and then we're gonna floor it again. And then take note 1 minus, and the output of the 1 minus is going to multiply it by the upper part. So, this is basically creating a line out of the mask, and we use this line um, as new mask for our um, line. So, type linear interpolate and plug this into alpha. Then we hold 4 and left click and here I choose a color. Let's use something brighter now and plug this into B of the lerp and for A we right click and choose scene texture and on the left for scene texture ID I choose post process input 0 and connect the color to the A of the lerp. And finally the lerp can be connected to the emissive color. This is now ready to be applied and you can close now the material and back in the waterline blueprint we add this material by clicking on the plus sign again. By the way, when you click on post process and then on the top you can search for material again, click on the plus, choose a set reference and then choose for the waterline post process material. So now when I minimize this, there should be a line in the middle of our water split. As you can see, that is the case. The problem now is that this line is a little bit sharp and I want it to be uh, blurred in some way. So what we got to do now 
is just right click on this waterline post process material and duplicate it and I'm gonna call it waterline blur post process material and open it up and now here we have to adjust some settings at first after the water level the add node needs to be 0 0.5 then the floor can be deleted on the bottom and the top. The error message can be ignored. And the clamps can be connected directly to the next node. Then after the last multiply, we type multiply again. And on the left we insert three. And this multiply will be clamped again. And the output of the clamp we put into the alpha. So since this is our waterline blur material, we don't need the color here, but instead we need a blur function. So I was looking uh, on the internet for a blur function. I found something nice. Um, the good thing is it's basically just a text file. You can just copy and paste in here. And there you have it, a nice blur function. By the way, this text file will be linked uh, below the video too. So you can just copy and paste it your project too if you want. Okay, then let's input the uh, output of our blur function to the lerp, uh, to the B of the lerp, and an error message appears. This is because of the blur function has a vector three output, while the scene texture post process input zero has a vector four output. So all we have to do is to Drag out the line and type component mask and select R, G and B on the left side and connect this to the A of the lerp. And just a little side note here. In the blur function I provide there is a radius parameter. Uh, a value of 10 looks good but might be taxing uh, on your system. So if you uh, notice a dip in uh, FPS uh, lower this value to 3 or 5. So now this is uh, ready to go. So I hit apply and close the material. And now in our blueprint again, I select uh, post process and search on the top right for material. And here I click on the little plus sign, choose a set reference, and here search for my newly created waterline blur post process material. And uh, one important note here is that uh, the order is uh, special here because the blur material will be on the very top, then the split material, and then the waterline post process material. So let's hit compile, close the blueprint. When I hit play, you see now I have a nicely blurred line between the bottom and the top. So this is basically it. Now you have an underwater split pulse process effect with a blurred line in the middle. Um, what you can do now, you can uh, adjust the underwater pulse process to your needs. Um, add some distortion underwater, change the color, change the color uh, depending on the depth under, underwater. And the same goes uh, for the water line itself and uh, of course for the uh, water materials. And as I told you at the beginning, below the video, there's a link to the project file I created for the waterline. There you can see what you can do with a little more advanced setup for waterline, like better post-process effects below the water for the waterline itself. And if you want to know how to create an advanced waterline with displacement and waves, just uh, look for the second video of this tutorial series. There I will explain how to achieve this effect. I hope you liked this tutorial. If so, click on the thumbs up button below and consider subscribing. See you in the next video.